So in this video, I'm going to break down Joe Rogan's new setup for his podcast and I'm going to tell you exactly why so much people rip this studio to shreds and not a fan of it. And as aspiring video creator, content creator, videographer, whatever floats your boat, I'm going to show you and you can probably learn a thing or two about what makes a good studio setup. Stay tuned. So if you don't know who Joe Rogan is, Joe Rogan is UFC commentator, comedian, and notorious podcast king OG when it comes to the podcasting space. And he recently moved into a new studio and by the look of the comments and the downvotes, people are not digging his new YouTube studio spot Spotify, whatever you want to call it, his essentially his backdrop or his studio setup. And first thing, there's three components. The first being is lighting. Lighting is so important as I as you can tell by these shots when they first started is that there is no key light and it looks like there are just two diffusers in the back, couple maybe ceiling lights, and it just looks very, very dark. And the importance of having video is that you want to have good lighting, right? That is, some people would say having good lighting is more important than having a super high quality camera. And as you can see, I have a key light right here and it looks like there seems to be missing a key light or the light is just really harsh in the newer episodes like the Tim Kennedy episode and maybe put on a diffuser and everything just looks very dark and like shadowy. And as you can see, my setup right now, I have a ring light, diva light, link is description, you wanna check it out, pointing down straight at me, to, off to the side, so it's creating a little bit of a shadow. I am like facing against a window, and there is that kind of like that blue, kind of like ambient lighting, but if it gets too dark, I do have a fill light or a soft box, as you can see, and this is my final lighting setup compared to if you just, you know, take this off. I dim this down a bit. It makes a huge difference, right? So I'm going to turn my key light back on, turn on my backlight, and that is lighting. So first thing off the bat, I, I looked at the lighting, I'm like, ooh, this is really dark. And having backlit LEDs or light bulbs, whatever that thing is in the background, is creating a lot of backlit subjects and you don't want that. You want, you know, nice filled out faces, maybe a little shadow of contouring, but you don't want pretty much really shadowy, dark and just looks gloomy and not as friendly and open as the previous studio set was. Second thing is composition and framing. So looking at these interviews and with Joe Rogan and his guests, they are in the rule of thirds, but the biggest thing that makes the video seem even tighter and even though it looks like they're in a smaller space is that the rule of thirds, they're fa the camera is facing the way where you're, you're essentially facing the screen. So if I were doing an interview, right, I would not want to be facing here, right? Because look at all this open white space that I have. So what I would do is I would turn my subjects and talent this way. So it looks like I'm, I'm looking into the more of an open space. Hence, I get less of that claustrophobic look, right? Versus if I was here and there's all this empty space that's not being utilized. And that is, I think, the biggest thing that I saw from these angles that are cutting back and forth in comparison to his LA studio, right? Look at this. Hey guys, blah, blah, blah. Why am I, there's all this blank space versus, so, how's your day going? Good to hear from you, blah, 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 blah. I, I'm, you always want your subject or talent to be looking into the bigger space instead of looking into the smaller space because you're wasting all the space and it's just about just having decent or rule of thirds composition and this comes along with filming a lot of interview videos and just understanding framing and composition as well as yes there might be an excuse of where the space is so small but I'm pretty sure you can just turn the camera just a little bit or even in post, if you can crop in and and just 
put the position just a little bit to the right, it would make a huge difference to making the space feel a lot less cramped. Even though, as you can see, there is not a lot of space compared to the previous studio. And another thing that I noticed right away is that there's not a lot of depth. What I mean by that is not necessarily like having a shallow depth of field, but like it is just you straight up against the wall. And I've seen a lot of comments in his newer podcast videos is where it's like, whoa, man, it looks like I'm watching two green screens that went wrong in the 1980s or something. <laughs> so what you want to be aware of is that if you're filming straight up against a wall that is just 2D, you want to maybe just angle it a little bit or have something in the background to have a little bit of a depth of field so it adds dimension so it's more of like a 3D feeling. So maybe adding a hair light, adding some sort of like LED backstrips or a backlight, some sort of like even Christmas tree lighting, something in the background to spice it up a little bit. And maybe adding some ornaments or just simply just turning yourself so that it doesn't look like it's two green screens talking to each other. And on top of that, in terms of composition and framing, is also you want to be wary of exactly where the camera's positioned. And as you can even see in some of the other shots how cramped the space is, is that the guest camera angle, you can also see Joe Rogan's head and vice versa. And if that's the look you're going for, then cool. But it looks like it's unintentional and it just looks very, very cramped in that space but i'm sure that there's ways that you can make it look a lot bigger than it actually is last and not least is that color psychology so you probably noticed in prisons or baby pens or anything with people that are there for a long extended period of time is that you'll notice no jails or prisons are red red signifies not all the time but some of the time love but also hate and anger. That is why you have the stereotype of green being good and thumbs down red being bad. And if you're an OG YouTuber, you would know that the thumbs up and the thumbs down used to be red and green. So a lot of the red ambience, it's creating, it's not something that people would want to look at for two hours and it can psychologically, not everybody, can create this kind of anger or this type of angry feeling versus if the room was completely like a baby blue or just like a neutral color or yellow. Most prisons are yellow because it's supposed to incite happiness, <laughs> contrary to what you may think in that setting but color does matter. So if someone's always looking at that dark kind of like red, it might play some role in the psychological mind versus if the room was just like, let's say a brick color, right? Like a, like a curtain and as, as how the studio was before, much more neutral colors. So you didn't really think, but now it's just like, this is really dark, like really red, Darth Vader red. And if, the vibe that Joe Rogan's going for with the spaceships and the whole you know, isolation tank type of vibe, I get it. But with with the, the lighting and the color, it's just pretty much a recipe for not the best aesthetically looking design. But I'm sure as time carries on, they can definitely make improvements, like I said, with lighting, adding a little bit more dimension playing around with their setup and including more, not necessarily even guest and Joe Rogan or host angles, but even having more of the straight down the table, third person wide angle shot and more variation through that. But like I said, when you move into a new studio and you're just testing out the angles, is you're still experimenting because you've been so used to one thing, you wanna be able to taste it and be able to see what can I do and it's, all a part of the process. I'm sure another 50 episodes down the road, it's gonna start to look a lot better. Just right now, it's just not looking the greatest, but yeah. 
And that guys, that was my breakdown of Joe Rogan's new studio setup and what I thought of it from a videographer, video editor's perspective. You wanna check out my stuff, link in the description and you get my free camera guide. Check out all my other videos about YouTube setups as well as getting your best budget gear, whatever you need, as well as if you wanna learn how to use a camera, link in the description, get my mastery guide. My name is Peter, you're watching Broke Visionary Collective, where we all start with nothing, but you can always create something. Cheers, guys.